now from the Congress. Three very distinct perspectives. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, who's been in the middle of talks to develop a bipartisan solution. Democratic Congressman Keith Ellison, co-chair of the House Progressive Caucus. And Republican Congressman Raul Labrador, a leader among House conservatives. And Senator Graham, let me begin with you. You were working on a deal with Democrats and Republicans in the Senate uh, that seemed to collapse yesterday, shot down by the Democratic leader, Harry Reid. Right now, is there any deal that can get through both houses of Congress and signed by the president? Uh, I don't see one. If you break the spending caps, you're not going to get any Republicans in the Senate. And here's what I'm worried about, a, a deal coming out of the Senate that a majority of Republicans can't vote for in the House. That really does compromise Speaker Boehner's uh, leadership. And after all this mess is over, do we really want to compromise John Boehner's leader of the House? I don't think so. So I'm not going to vote for any plan that I don't think can get a majority of Republicans in the House understanding that defunding Obamacare and delaying it for a year is not a realistic possibility now. That's a pretty high bar, Senator Gremley. Bring that to Congressman uh, Labrador here. You've been insisting that there has to be changes in the Affordable Care Act in order to pass any kind of a CR, any kind of a debt limit uh, extension. But the Democrats have been absolutely clear that's not going to happen. You don't have a majority for that. You know, it seems strange. And uh, we're four days away from breaching the debt ceiling. We gave the president a pretty good offer. The offer was that we would, we would actually extend the debt ceiling without any requirements for six weeks. And so we can continue negotiations on the debt, and then we can continue also negotiations on the continuing resolution, the, the, the actual budgeting, the actual spending uh, bill that we need to do. And I don't see why the president is not accepting that, why he's not working with us. I, I think it's, uh, it, it's been very difficult to work with him. He wouldn't even come to the table to negotiate. And now that he's coming to the table, he rejected two offers. I thought the House offer was a pretty reasonable one, and I'm surprised that he also rejected the Senate offer. Like well, I mean, it's very simple. We can negotiate and talk all we want to after we reopen the government. As a matter of fact, you know, the, we can open the government and have any kind of discussions they want over anything they want. But we've got to reopen the government and we've got to pay America's debts. Let's not forget, George, this whole thing started when Republicans said we want to defund, delay and repeal the Affordable Care Act, which gives millions of Americans insurance reform and access to health care, including about 200,000 in Idaho. And now they're saying that unless we stop all that, then they're not going to open the government. And that's not realistic. Let me bring we that, won't do it. Let me bring that to Senator Graham. You just recognize, you say that that is unrealistic, Senator Graham, to expect any mm -hmm. changes now Senator's right. A, a, right. In, in Obamacare. So how can you convince those House Republicans like Congressman Labrador right here that there is going to have to be some kind of an agreement <clears throat> that doesn't include that and basically gives Democrats, you know, it might be the, the hard politics right now, most of what they want? Well, at the end of the day, I, I, I really do believe that the Democrats have moved the goalpost twice in the Senate. They, there is a political, we're in a free fall as Republicans, but Democrats are not far behind. And after listening to all of us talk now, I probably understand why 60% of Americans want to vote all incumbents out. To my colleagues in the House on both sides and to my friends in the Senate, we're ruining both institutions. So it is unrealistic to expect us to be able to defund or delay Obamacare by shutting the government down, but the fight on Obamacare is far from over. After this mess is behind us, Obamacare will be a liability for Democrats, and the government shutdown, we can survive if we're smart. Paul Ryan is uh, working on a plan that could start in the House that I think would be uh, involving very good government pro uh, proposals to prevent future shutdowns to do some things for Obamacare that need to be done in terms of correcting the problem and, quite frankly, putting every member of Congress in the same plan on the same terms as all me, Americans. I would hope that would come from the House. Let me bring that it's to better, Congressman Ellison, that, that particular It's better plan. to start in the House. Because, you know, Congressman Ryan has talked about perhaps uh, relieving some of the pain of the sequester in return for entitlement reforms. Can Democrats accept that? Well, it's all about, you know, the details. Uh, let's see, because we cannot say, I cannot support saying that we're going to diminish and lower, uh, say, Social Security in exchange for, I don't know, uh, anything. I mean, we, these folks who exist on that uh, are already on, on meager amounts of income, and so we're not going to inflict more pain on them. But look, it's all in the mix. Let's reopen the government. Let's pay America's debts. And I'm open to discuss anything any Republican wants to talk about, but it will be us giving and taking and them giving and taking, not a situation like we have now, which is we will, we will in, stop inflicting pain on America 
if you get rid of health care, which brings insurance reform and access to millions of Americans. We can't do that. Congressman Labrador, if, if a deal passes the Senate that does open up the government again, extends the debt limit for several months, but it's not the kind of deal that a majority of Republicans that you could even support, will there be retaliation against Speaker Boehner from House conservatives if he schedules that vote? I, I don't think so. First of all, whatever passes the House of Representatives is going to have the, the majority of the House. But I, listen to what Keith just said, and Keith is a good friend. He said that he wants us to open the government, reopen the government. That's he right. says that he wants us to, to go ahead and vote on the debt ceiling, but he's unwilling to talk about what he's willing to negotiate on. He's unwilling to tell you what things he's going to be working on. Remember when, the job, Raul. No, remember, when the president, remember when the president said it's that he was for chain CPI, Every Democrat in Congress said that That's he was, on Social Security. Yeah, on Social Social Security. Security Every single senator says that they wouldn't do it. Every Democratic senator. This is the problem that we have. Anytime we talk about entitlement reforms, the Democrats say that they will only do it if we raise taxes. Every time we talk about the, the real spending problems, and this is all an issue of fairness. If you look at Obamacare, the president and his administration have given exemptions to their friends, to businesses, and all we're asking is to give the same exemption to the American people. I don't think that's I'm too so much so to I can, let me just say, we can talk Graham. about all these things after we reopen the government and pay America's debts. There are things we can do to improve, not defund, delay, and repeal, but improve the Affordable Care Act. And there are things that I would propose that we do to improve even so-called entitlement reform. Actually, these are earned benefits. What if we negotiated drug prices as opposed to just locked in and let the, uh, in, the pharmaceutical industry get charged what they want? That's something I could do. There's a number of things we could do, but we cannot do it under the gun as we are now. So let's we, we, just, we just offered you a six-week extension of the debt limit. Six weeks, no good. You want to do oh, this again, right? Yeah, six yeah, weeks. You want to do this again in six weeks? So, so, so what you want Bro, is you want crazy. to get everything you want, and, and then you say that you will negotiate. I want to take one final question to Senator Graham. You know, this is the we just <laughs> Looks saw, like we're almost yeah, there. Yeah, we got the differences in the Democrats <laughs> and the Republicans right there. But there I also can seems feel to it be coming a fair, together. Yeah, a fair amount of tension between Senate Republicans and House Republicans. I was struck by this tweet put out by the congressional correspondent for the National Review, Robert Costa. He said. The political dynamic now between House R's and Senate R's is tense. Senate R's feel like Cantor asking him to stand strong is a middle finger. Has it gotten that bad? <laughs> Well, the truth is we started down the road with unrealistic expectations. The government has shut down. Obamacare is still up, but not running very well. What breaks my heart is for the last 12 days, you've had a complete meltdown of the portal called uh, Obamacare. The whole system is just not working, and we're overshadowing how badly uh, Obamacare has been rolled out. But as between the House and the Senate, we really do share a common goal of trying to replace and repeal Obamacare. Care over time. We never had the leverage through the shutdown to repeal or replace. That was unrealistic. Our Democratic friends keep moving the goalpost in the Senate thinking they're winning. But my belief is that that the Paul Ryan should lead this effort with John Boehner to pass something out of the House that doesn't delay or defund, but would be good government. That's the best thing for the Republican Party and for the country. Oh. But as between House and Senate Republicans, the sooner this is over, the better for us guys. And to our Democratic friends, you own Obamacare, and it's going to be the political gift that keeps on giving. So the shutdown will be old news next year. Obamacare's faults will be front and center in 2014 if we don't screw this up. That will have to be the last word this morning. Gentlemen, thank you all very much. Thank you, George. Thanks, Roll. Thank you.